Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Demo Ops Zero. This is a very special episode with a special guest. Hi, Kareem. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Shreya. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Could you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do at Ops Zero? Sure. So my name is Kareem Tontawi, and I'm a group product manager here at Ops Zero. So what I've been working on recently with our teams is a new initiative called Auth0 for AI agents. And what we're doing here is making it really easy for developers to secure their AI agents. Awesome. I have some burning questions for you to try to understand what you mean by securing AI agents. So question number one is, how is AI changing the authentication and the security landscape? There's this big shift now to having AI agents as this new interface for how we interact with technology, uh, whether that's from uh, companies, even in our personal lives, or companies and services we use at work. There's been a recent report that showed, I think over 80% of companies are planning to implement new AI agents within the next three years. And this could be you know, things from customer service, uh, automating internal process, or even making decisions on our behalf. So it's become clear that AI agents are doing more and more each year. And it's something that companies are actively pushing. They're always trying to make their AI agents more capable. Absolutely. Um, we're definitely seeing that on the startup side as well. So many of our startups um, are starting to use or build AI agents. Um, even if they haven't started it yet, it's definitely on their roadmap. What are some concerns that you're starting to see developers have when it comes to the security of these AI agent tech applications? <laughs> That's the wrong term, but uh, that's perfect. I think I think this is a new field. There's a lot of new security requirements coming up, and you know the best practices or even the auth solutions to address these to address these new requirements um, they haven't existed, and and really that's what we've tried to solve here. So with auth zero for AI agents, we really wanted to make it easy now for developers who are building these new agents who are much more capable. Uh, to do so in a secure way. Most developers today, like if they're going to go and build a new AI agent, they're going to use an AI framework. Um, and these frameworks are really great. You know, you might have Langchain, uh, Lama Index, Vercel AI. There's a whole bunch. And these, they're really super useful to get you up and running. I think maybe where they fall a bit short is they don't focus on the security aspects. When, say, you want to connect your AI agent to another application uh, or service. And Usually the easiest way to get up and running is like, okay, let's just hard code some credentials or hard code an API key, but these end up giving the AI agent too much access. That's okay, like if you're in a built -in environment or you're testing, but if you really wanna take your agent to production, you wanna release it out there and get people using it, there is a gap and you do need, you do need to have an auth solution in place. And that's usually outside of the scope of what these AI agent frameworks um, are responsible for, like what they'll do or what they'll show. And we've been doing some market research. We've been talking to uh, our customers who are building AI agents. And we found there's generally three more use cases that require some special attention to security. Could you walk us through what these use cases are and maybe give examples of how you're seeing them being implemented in, in the wild? Sure thing. So I think something we've all seen before, like even before AI agents is, um, this consent screen. So basically, if an agent wants to access, say, my Google Calendar, it will need to go request uh, that access. And then I see that screen from Google that says, OK, this application or this agent wants to access your calendar. And then the key part here is because, again, this is a standards-based OAuth flow, you can see what scopes or what permissions it wants to do. Like, does it just want to read my calendar, or does it actually want to be able to like edit and create events uh, and so forth. So in the, as part of this flow, like if I um, accept and say, okay, I do want to authorize this, now Google will return a refresh token with those specific scopes. And then that refresh token can be used to um, get the necessary access token to call uh, Google's APIs. So at the end of the day, what you have is now your AI agents can be interacting with that application, interacting with Google. So perfect, you have it all set up. But then like what happens if I log out and come back the next day? If I try and interact with Google again, you know, now it's going to say, oh, you need to authorize again. And here's the consent flow. And that's not a great user experience. And that's really something we've tried to solve with Token Vault, where instead of having 
or maybe your AI agent try and manage these tokens, or for you as a developer to start needing to build out some ways to store and manage tokens securely, we're going to take care of that with Auth0. Um, with Token Vault, we're going to securely save the refresh tokens, and then we will automatically get an access token for your AI agent when it needs it, only when it needs it, once that user has logged back in again. So that's the first use case. Um, the second use case is along the lines of searching for documents. And this is really captured well by AI agents that fall into this like knowledge bot type. So let's say you're an employee at a company and you want to find some information. This is something kind of I struggle with day to day is there's so many documents, there's so many places to look. It's not easy to search through them all. And there are AI agents now that will connect to all your documents. You can ask it a question. It'll find those relevant documents and then give you that perfect answer. That's all great, but what happens if like I ask a question and it's not something that I should have access to? We can't, we just, you know, can't have that agent access every single document. It really needs to apply permissions and make sure it only looks at the documents that I have access to. So the way we've solved this is we're, we're, we have a way to integrate another one of Auth0's products, which is called fine-grained authorization with AI agents. So what fine-grained authorization really allows you to do is model these really like complex permission structures. So for example, with documents, I might have like uh, view, comment, edit, share. So I have all these different permissions and then I could have access to documents directly. I can be part of groups and multiple groups and I get permissions from all those groups. So that's really what fine-grained authorization solves. It's designed to be scalable. It's designed to be performant in these very complex situations. And especially once you start growing to have you know millions of documents that might exist in your company. The way it all works together is um, you'd have fine-grained authorization as like the security layer that implements permissions um, so that the AI agent can simply do what it's good at, which is finding documents, finding answers, but then you still make sure users only have access to the documents they should see. Now I have a personal use case for you. I love shopping and I would love to have like an AI agent that can go and find the right things to go and buy for me. However, I feel scared that it's going to have my payment information and it might go ahead and start making a bunch of purchases on my behalf without my approval. So for use cases like that, where money is involved, where credit card information is involved, how do you make sure that my, um, like I'm still part of this process? I think it's called human in the loop. Like how do you implement that? Can you implement something like that? Mm -hmm. um, you fit the nail like right on our, you know, this is our third use case really. It's human in the loop. So here, maybe with your example, you say, okay, there's some, I'm like, I'm going shopping or maybe like the example I like to use is I want to book flights. I like to travel. So I'll, I'll say like, okay, I want to go on vacation and I might have an AI agent that helps me book flights. So I might tell it, okay, here's the dates I want to travel. Um, here's some of my preferences. Like, you know, I don't want the flight to be too early in the morning. I don't want too many layovers and this is my budget. Now go and find me a good deal. I probably should have used travel. I think that that's a much more <laughs> relevant example. I'm not too big on shopping, but yeah, I prefer travel. It's so. So exactly, like I think at this point, it's like, okay, the AI agents, it's found something. I want to review it. I don't want it to just go ahead and um, make that booking. And, and I think you, I think another key part you mentioned is it shouldn't even be able to pay. It shouldn't be able to even book on my behalf. I shouldn't have given it that authorization right away. I actually want to wait until it tells me what it's trying to do, then I could authorize it. And this is something that we've solved for, and there's actually an OWAT standard for this called Client Initiated Back Channel Authorization. Uh, we like to call it SIBA for short. This really is a standard that just makes sure that an AI agent can specify like exactly what it's trying to do. Like I'm trying to buy these tickets at this price, and then through Auth0, I can get a notification because you know I'm not sitting in front of the agent. I get that notification on my phone or in my email. And I can see like the specific details. And at that point, I can decide to approve it or reject it. And then what really happens, and again, this is really the key part, is when I'm authorizing this transaction, it's only tied to that exact transaction. Like you can't use this authorization to then buy different tickets or do anything else. It only approves exactly uh, what I agreed to.
agents. So you know for a fact that you can trust your AI agent to only make purchases and only make these decisions once you have consented in that specific moment. Um, and that seems very important for anything that requires money. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot of other use cases there too that we can explore. What, is, what are the first steps that I should take to get something like this up and running for my AI agent? I think the best way to explain is kind of, again, walk you through that, walk, walk, walk through a process. So if I, if I want to build an AI agent and let's say um, it's going to connect to Slack. So it's going to need to do that tool call that hits the Slack API. And for that API call to succeed, we know we need the user's access token. But then you need to start like, if you're actually kind of going through the step by step, you need to think like, did the user already authorize this? So I can just call token vault and get the access token, or is it the first time and I need them to authorize? And even if they've already authorized, there's always a chance like they can go to Slack and like remove that permission to your application, or there's also sort of like um, where they might need more permissions. Like if maybe the first time they only got read access, but now they also want write access. So not just to read your Slack, but now they want to send messages. So there's a whole bunch of use cases and edge cases. And you can write a lot of code to try and like handle all of this, but it's really not a great like scalable way. We try and solve all of this for you. So we've we've even gone through and like said, okay, let's build AI agents, let's get them working and see what challenges people will hit and try and make that process as smooth as possible. So as a developer, it's not a great experience if you do have to like write tons of code and handle all of this. And with our AI agent SDK, so we have these for quite a few AI frameworks. I think the most popular ones speak like Langchain, Lama Index, um, or even like Vercel AI. We have some hooks essentially that you can insert into your tool call flow. And what it will do is you can trigger a specific error if you don't have the proper access to an API. So then conceptually, as, as like a developer, you just need to say, okay, if there's no access, I'm gonna throw this error and I'm gonna add an error handler uh, from the Auth0 SDK. And then within our error handler, we will say, um, if you don't have access, go get access, use token vault, do all those checks, handle all those edge cases, and then automatically resume the tool call. So it's really a seamless process um, once you've integrated it. And we don't expect you to integrate for every tool. Like if you had to do this within every tool, it would again not be a great experience. So this is sort of a wrapper at the tool calling level and not within each tool. So you just do it once and then it'll work for all your existing tools. And if you keep adding new tools, they fall into uh, the same framework. Well, that sounds awesome. Does this change anything for the users? Um, so this is something actually that, again, we focus on is how does it look like from the user's point of view, like if a user is using your your uh, AI agent and it's interacting with it, it says, you know, get all this data, analyze it, now send the summary to Slack. If you previously authorized Slack, it just works. There's no change. But if you hadn't authorized Slack, now you have to go through that flow where you provide consent. Um, you know, how should that look like? Should the user just suddenly have like the consent screen pop up? It, you know, that would be a bit jarring. It's not a great user experience. And this is one of the things that, you know, we've solved for. And this is something that I really love because I think at the end of the day, it really helps drive trust uh, in your application. So we've, we've added some code where we can um, detect that this is happening and then show a sort of informational message back to the user. So in the chat, they get a, they get a message back that says, hey, you actually need to give permission for this AI agent to access Slack. And here's a button you can click on to approve that. So you then click on that button, then you go into the consent flow. So really, I think it's I think it's really powerful to have that, and it really you know gives that full end end user experience a lot more polish. Um, is there anything else that we should be looking forward to? Um, is there do you have any recommendations or where we can start learning about this product? Yep, I think the best place to start learning and even start exploring building this out would be to go to our website, which is autzero.com forward slash AI. Um, no surprise there, you know, slash AI. And there are some also real cool features that we're working on that are going to be coming out soon, uh, especially around like auth for MCP servers. I know this is very hot and a lot of people are 
building MCP servers. And then again, it's like, well, now how do I secure this? So that's one of the areas we're tackling and we're very excited to be releasing uh, some updates there soon. That's so exciting. I get asked about MCP servers like every time I go to an event. So I'm glad we're working on something for that. Thank you so much for your time, Kareem, and for walking us through this product. Excellent. Thanks, Shreya. Thanks for having me. Bye.